had to do a little calibration on my sending unit for my gas gauge in my 1951 Ford. And basically what it ended up what I ended up doing is I put a new sending unit in. Um, the float line, I had not bent it at all. It was just a straight going all the way out. A straight bar. And in doing so, that means that for a half, like right now it's set at a half a tank, or about, um, you can see the bar would be going at about 2 o'clock out that way. If, if 12 o'clock was straight up and 3 o'clock is about where the, the bar is right now, but where it goes through the screw, that's about 2 o'clock. So... Um, without the bend, it would be at about 2 o'clock, which with the length of this bar up to the float would just about give me about a full tank of gas. And if I move it down to empty, which it comes down somewhere in here, um, which is, you know, right now there's only maybe two, three gallons of gas in the tank. So it's hardly enough to even move this float. And the way the, the way this was earlier, before I put the bend in it, it would have actually turned even more counterclockwise or clockwise. And so even um, at where it is right now, which is about four o'clock, you can see I'm reading empty on my gauge. So if it was before the bend, if it was about five o'clock on the screw, and when, I'm talking about where it actually goes through, right, right here. Okay, you can see it coming out the other side. So it's at about four right now. If it was at five o'clock, then it would take almost a almost a full tank of gas to get it up to even three which is still less than a half a tank on the gauge. So I'll show you, if I, if I were to bring the, the potentiometer up to three o'clock, right there, I'm sorry, so it's about three o'clock, I get almost no movement on my gauge. So now, as I fill it up, I don't have quite the accuracy when it's down low and I think it's, it's kind of a function of the gauge. I mean, it is the original gauge, 1951. Um, but I know if it's reading above the E, I still got some gas left. You can see it's, it's still kind of creeping up a little bit. So even down pretty low, I, I would know I've got some gas in there. Now if I fill it up to about a half a tank, which is about right there, and there's a catch on the gauge. I'm not sure. Right around there, right around that quarter of a tank. Yep, there it is. Yeah, I think you saw it pop back. It kind of goes, it jumps back down and slowly starts coming up. And it never really wants to get going up. It doesn't track to a half a tank very well. Uh, it might still be moving a little bit now. Yeah, it is. But to me, it's more important if coming down from full, because that's how you, you know, you're going to fill it up, and it's going to go all the way up to full. Boom. And your gauge goes all the way up. So right now, you can see my float is all the way up high. My gauge is reading all, almost all the way up on the F. And that's as far as the potentiometer will go. So I, there's nothing I can do to even make it go, make it read any higher than that. And I start using gas and my float comes down to about halfway. And the needle is it's not the most responsive, but it slowly starts drifting down. 
So what I ended up doing is when I took this out of the tank, I went and measured from the hole where the sending unit goes in on the top of the tank to the bottom of the tank. And I used a, a metal ruler for that. So with a metal ruler, I've got zero at this end. It goes all the way up to just a, a hair over seven inches. So we'll say seven inches depth in the tank. And using that, say about three and a half inches would be half tank. So let's see, right about, right about there. Now the, the arm is at four. But I think the float is closer to three and a half. So, it, at any rate, and you know, my gauge is just a hair below half a tank. Maybe I need to adjust it a little bit more, bend it down. You know, I could bend, bend this arm down just a little bit. Um, so I may, may try that. But what I did to get this whole thing working, um, well, I'll explain it to you in just a second. Okay, so to get this whole thing working, I used a, a battery from my Milwaukee um, electric screwdriver, and it's just a um, yeah, M12 lithium, so it's a 12-volt battery. And I just used a couple of uh, spade connectors, went in the positive and the negative, soldered them together and kind of fixed it like that, and put alligator clips on each end of it. So since it's the, tw the six, original six volt gauge, I've got a um, electronic voltage reducer here, which, mm, there you go. You can kind of see it just clips, it screws on the original post of the gauge. Then there's another post that your positive, your, uh, your battery lead connects to. So that's the red lead going to my positive on the battery. The sending unit is the white wire right here. This is the white wire from the sending unit and it connects to the top of my, up here, the top of my sending unit. And then of course the sending unit is grounded and then my electronic voltage reducer is grounded. So um, I did all this just so I could test it on the bench. Um, it's not that hard to pull the sending unit out of the tank it was a little bit of a challenge to pull the gauge out of the instrument cluster and get the instrument cluster out of the car. Um, to do that, you gotta lower the steering wheel about an inch or the steering column about an inch. Not a big deal though. So anyways, I, I kind of got aggravated because I got the new sending unit, I got the voltage reducer and stuff wasn't working. So now I'm got the time, wanted to make it work. So anyways, I've got the um, got this all set up here. Um, if you care to look at it, here's the the diagram that I used. Uh, you can see the electronic voltage reducer hooked to the back of the gauge and grounded. The battery connected to the voltage reducer from going through the ignition switch, and then the tank sending unit, which is grounded and the output of the sending unit going to the other side of the gauge. So by doing all this, I was able to put it on the bench, measure my depth of the tank, kind of recreate everything right here. And I think I'm gonna have a little bit better luck with it now. I think I'll, I'll at least see something on the tank. Um, so I hope this helps out to anybody that's got an old car with a pretty simple circuit for your gas tank sending unit. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And uh, once again, got to keep it running. And we'll talk to you next time.